The first time I used a tiling window manager, it was i3 in uh, like 2018, and I knew I was never going back to the floating window chaos that I'd come from in other desktop environments. That being said, setting up i3 is a huge pain, or any tiling window manager, be it like DWM, Hyperland, or whatever. There's just so many components of convenience built into desktop environments like GNOME, uh, Plasma, or if you're coming from another thing like Windows or Mac OS, that make your life easier when you're using a computer. These are things like a GUI for audio control or a GUI for, uh, for Wi-Fi. Also, just setting up the clipboard properly can be a surprising amount of work. And if you're new to Linux, knowing where all of these components are and where to install them takes a lot of time. But even then, if you have a lot of experience and you're moving to a new system, moving that configuration with you can be a lot of work, even if you're storing your dot files on Git. So, when Pop! OS released its Pop! Shell, or when System76 released Pop! Shell for GNOME, I was super excited, right? You get the convenience of a desktop environment like GNOME, but you also get all of the power of a tiling window manager. Now, System76 has shifted focus to its cosmic desktop environment, which means that they won't be building on top of GNOME, and it also means that Pop! hasn't had a release since like 2204. So. If you want up-to-date packages and you also want that tiling experience without having to configure your entire setup, you were kind of screwed for a bit. That is, until the release of the Forge GNOME extension. And so today we're going to talk about how I use the GNOME Forge extension, which is very similar to the Pop Shell, uh, to set up an i3-like experience on a modern sort of, or an up-to-date Debian system. Let's dive into some of the hotkey management and then we'll get into Forge. One of the most important things for me in a desktop environment is having five, specifically five, virtual workspaces or desktops, whatever you want to call them. I think Windows calls them virtual desktops. To set that up, we can go through the GNOME settings. If I hit the super key here, it brings this up. And then I can go ahead and type in settings and open up this window. To set up workspaces, we can go to multitasking. And then I prefer a fixed number of workspaces. It's because I think of different workspaces for specific things, right? Workspace one for me is where I keep my terminal, two is for my browser, and then three through five are other things. Uh, usually something like Discord, Slack, email, client, Spotify, that kind of stuff. So I keep one through five, and then I also want to be able to navigate to them using a set of hotkeys. So if you're interested in using the system just like I do, you can go through and instead of dynamic workspaces, you're gonna use fixed. Uh, dynamic means you can create new workspaces and kill them whenever you want. Some people like that flexibility. I don't, <laughs> I want exactly five. So I pick fixed number of workspaces and I set that sucker to five. So we've got five workspaces. And if I hit caps lock here, uh, I've mapped caps lock to the super key. Uh, you can see my five different environments going at once, and you can even see my terminal up here and my browser over here. Now, we of course, in a keyboard-driven environment, need to be able to hotkey through those different environments. So I've got this, you know, super one, super two, super three, and we can do that by jumping over to keyboard. So we go over to keyboard and then view and customize shortcuts. And then from here, we can use navigation. Uh, can I make this bigger? Oh yeah, uh, so we can do switch to workspace. Now you'll see that we can only do switch to workspace for one through four, and we will get to a solution for that problem later. Uh, but to set a specific hotkey for these, we'll start there. You're just gonna click that sucker and then hit the keys that you want. It'll detect it and you're gonna hit set. Easy as that. That'll get us workspaces one through four. I also like to be able to move a window to a different workspace. I have shift super for that, right? So I just have to hit both those keys plus the number I want and you're good to go. Now let's say you want those five workspaces as bad as I do. It means you gotta dive a little bit deeper into how GNOME handles its settings. It's not as convenient or simple as something like i3 that just has a text file in your .config. Instead, you've gotta use dconf. So what the heck is dconf? Dconf basically helps you manage a dconf database, which is just GNOME's way of storing data. Um, not a text file, this is, this is a database that you have to find other ways to gain access to. GNOME settings introduces you to some of them, but not all of them. If you do want to tweak some of these uh, deconf settings, you're going to have to install some extra software, and we're going to search that up. That's just the deconf editor. So we can search that up with apt, and if we want to install it, we can do the usual stuff, sudo apt, install deconf editor, you can run that, and then we can just run it, right? So deconf editor. Now, deconf editor, 
lets you break your system <laughs> a little bit. Like you can do some damage if you're not careful and it will prompt you basically saying, hey, are you, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do this? And you have to promise to be careful. And today we will be. So we want to drill down through this like database to find where key bindings are for navigating to the fifth workspace that we've spawned. So we're going to go through org. This is like their, their base uh, folder. We're going to go GNOME, shell, and then key bindings. So GNOME, shell, key bindings. And now we see all the things that have been kind of hidden from us. When we look through this, there were some conflicting preset hotkeys. These are the switch to application hotkeys. Originally, they're set to, set to super N, N being whatever number it is. I had to override those. Um, whenever I was using Super 5 to try to navigate to the workspace that I wanted, it would instead switch to application 5, which was like GNOME software. So we have to go go in here, and what we're gonna do is I'll show an example of how to unbind that. Use default is where we need to go first. We need to toggle that off so that we're not using the default binding, and then we just, we just get rid of this. Um, we're just going to clear out between the square, the square brackets, but we're gonna leave the square brackets in place. And now when we navigate, we hit apply, we navigate back to key bindings, and you can see all our switch to applications are empty except for eight, nine. I don't use that many workspaces. So we've cleared out our conflicting hotkey, which was super five, which used to spawn GNOME software. We've cleared that out now. Now we want to be able to navigate to workspace five or move a window to workspace five with that same hotkey. What do we do? We drill down again, still in deconf. I'm gonna close this guy over here. Still in deconf editor, we're gonna go GNOME, desktop, window manager, key bindings. So let's do that. Desktop, window manager, key bindings. Now that we're in org, GNOME, desktop, window manager, that's WM, key bindings, we can scroll down and we find switch to workspace and we can set that to super five. Same thing that we did before, we can click on it. Uh, we wanna unset, use default value if it's set and then we give it the custom value. We put this in two single quotation marks, we type Super in uh, little alligator braces is I guess what I'm calling those now. And then we get a five, boom, done. The other thing we want is to be able to move a window to a different workspace by hitting super shift. So I've got that over here. Up here we have move to workspace. We're just gonna go click on that one. And the same idea, right? We wanna make sure use default value isn't configured, or sorry, is not set. And then we wanna do single quotation marks alligator braces, that's what I'm calling them from now on. That's so much more fun than whatever the heck they're called. Uh, super, another pair of alligator braces, shift, and then five. And now we can navigate between all of our workspaces. You can see all my recording crap going on. The next thing we wanna do is set up hotkeys to make sure that we can launch the two most important applications on any system, your terminal and your browser. I've made that arbitrary decision. Those are the most important to me. So again, we're gonna pop over to our GNOME settings. We can do this from view and customize shortcuts over here. So it's under keyboard and then at the bottom keyboard shortcuts, view and customize. We wanna look at launchers because the web browser is here by default. And I just hit that with super E, right? So I click this, it asks you for a shortcut. I do super E, I hit set, and you're good to go. Why super E? Because I grew up on Windows and I refer to all browsers as Explorer. I know this is heinous and I do it anyways, I don't know. Now, if you want your terminal to be launched, depending on what terminal you use, you're gonna use a custom shortcut. Basically, if you wanna create a new one, we can hit plus and then we go terminal, we give it a command and then we hit set shortcut. So let's take a look at the existing one I've got here. Terminal, the command is just alacrity and then I hit super T for my shortcut. So let's do that one more time. Alacrity, um, oh, whatever. And then set shortcut, and it's the same interface as you got before. Good to go. So now we have our terminal set up. So if I hit super T, I get a terminal, and I can do that as many times as I want, and, they, and we'll talk about how we tile them pro properly later. One other thing we need set up is closing windows. I love the super Q thing for closing things. It is just so, it just feels so good. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It just feels so good to kill an application with super Q. Uh, and luckily it's pretty much built in already. So we can do, I'm gonna search up this thing cause I don't actually know where it is. And it turns out it's under windows. What a shocker. Uh, close window. I think I've already got it configured to super Q. 
and we can set that the same way as we did before. Finally, we can get to some tiling. This happens with the Forge GNOME extension. So, I mean, this is pretty easily Googleable if you want, uh, Forge GNOME. If you do that, you'll get hit with the GitHub and you'll get hit with this GNOME Shell extensions. It's fairly easy to set up. You need, a, you need an extension for your browser, the GNOME Shell integration. That will be prompted to you. You get a little like, it tells you like this. Hey, do you wanna install the browser extension? And I'm like, yes, yes I do. And so you click that and it installs. It's, it's fairly nice and simple. Then you need to select the Shell version. So what version of GNOME you're working on. If you don't know, you can do this fairly easily by spawning a terminal, and then you can do gnome shell dash dash version. I'm on 46.4, so I'm gonna go over here and select 46 uh, and hit install. That gets Forge going. Now, a nicety of gnome is you can see this up here in this little like panel, and you can turn tiling on and off. So if I spawn a bunch of terminals, I get this floating window chaos, but if I turn it on, tiling. Forge has its own set of configuration that you need to tinker with too. Um, because there's there's not enough locations for settings to be. W what fun would it be if everything was housed nicely in one place? Luckily, it's at least fairly easy to go find. If we hit tiling, we've got tiling over here with a little arrow that gives us more options, and then we can hit settings, right? And I've already got that open over here. A couple of things I like to configure. I like some gaps between my windows. Uh, it makes me feel good. I set it to six with a multiplier of one, and that gives me this on a 1440p monitor. I do also like this uh, this hint. Uh, so it tells me which window I'm focused on at the moment. That's helpful because, uh, I don't know, I get confused. I'm, I'm not that clever. Then we can get on to the keyboard hotkeys. These are generally already configured in a sane way. So switching between focused windows is to me the most important feature. Uh, those are already set to reasonable things, right? So we can just do in like Vim-like hotkeys, if you want to focus to the left, we hit super H, that gives me over there, and you can see the blue highlight navigate over there. Super L takes me to the right. Uh, we'll spawn some more windows. If I want to go up, super K. If I want to go down, super J, right? And so you can hold down super as well, and you can navigate between things that way. We've got the core functionality of a fairly simple to use tiling window manager. I'm not going to deal with resizing windows via the hotkeys because it's clunky. I've got some set up like this, and you can see I just have to like spam the key, the whole window shakes. It's kind of just ugly and clunky. I'm, I'm just gonna use the mouse. Uh, to be honest, most of the time, I'm fine with how, like with the size windows spawn. I have a 21 by nine, like ultra wide monitor. There's just enough space. I have my, my virtual desktops. That basically covers me for that. If you wanna go into that though, uh, under, again, under tiling and then settings, there are keyboard shortcuts for window shortcuts. I'm just gonna pop these over. And that is under resize. Window resize left and window resize right. It's kind of weird. Basically it asks you, resizing happens by selecting the edge, the left edge or the right edge of a window. And then you can either increase it and that basically bumps it out from the center of that window or it bumps it toward the center of the window. So we can we can show that off, I guess. So I have window resize left decrease. I'm gonna do three windows so that we can illustrate this a little easier. So if I wanna do window resize left increase, I'm gonna do control super. So that's down here. So that's going to take the leftmost edge and bump it out from the center, right? So I'm hitting control super H, it's bumping this left edge of the window over and then if I want to decrease it, I'm gonna use control shift, I'm uh, sorry, uh, control super again with L and that's gonna move the left edge towards the center. You can do the same thing with the right edge. I think I've got that set to control shift. So we can take, now I'm hitting control shift H, that's moving the right edge inwards. So that's decrease and then control shift L is moving the right edge outwards. For me, this is just too many hotkeys this is one point where I think the mouse just kind of works better and easier for me. Might not for you. The last thing we're gonna set up is Rofi. Rofi is, an I would call it pretty optional because Gnome's uh, equivalent of, of a runner, if you just hit uh, the super key, spawns this guy and you can type to search and this will spawn uh, any application you're really looking for on your system. There's not really any need to switch to a different, uh, different runner, but if you're partial, 
to Rofi or D menu or something like that, then we can set that up. So to do that, let's say you want Rofi. That's what I've got set up in this. We can do, I'm just actually gonna pop that closed. We can do sudo apt install Rofi. You hit enter, the usual stuff comes up, you hit yes, and then we have Rofi. But Rofi is unsure what to do. <laughs> when we just launch it, it basically asks you what you want to do with it. There are a couple of uh, things Rofi lets you select. Most people are kind of looking for run. If I do Rofi-show run, that's when I get a list of my like active applications or available applications like NVIDIA settings, right? And so we need to just bind this to a key. If you're used to i3, that might be super D. Uh, D menu is what happens there. And so we're just gonna set this up in GNOME settings. So we pop open to our GNOME settings, keyboard, view and customize shortcuts again. We go customize shortcuts and you can see I've already got this set up. We're gonna hit plus, we're gonna call it Rofi. This, we're gonna type in the same command we ran in the terminal to get it to show our run menu. So that's Rofi dash show run. And then you can set the, the key to whatever you like. I'm not going to do this because I've already got that set up and we can close that. And then super D launches Rofi. You'll see that it's off to the side and kind of awkward like this. That's just because currently I've got Nvidia making my screen pretend that it's 1440p. And for some reason, Rofi's not picking that up properly and extending to, to be centered on the ultra wide screen. Don't know what's going on with that, but there you go. Once you've got all that configured, you've got a GNOME setup with tiling window management, the ease of navigating between various workspaces with Super 1 through 5, you've, and you've still got all of the comfort of setting up your Wi-Fi with a GUI, audio management with a GUI, without having to, to manage that yourself. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Uh, if you wanna like the video, that would be nice, but you don't have to, I guess. If you disliked the video, I guess you could, I guess you could do that too, but I would be sad. This was, this was hard. <laughs> okay, bye.